Hey everybody, welcome back to Spelunky. I know it's been a long, long time since I've said those words here on the YouTube channel, but with good reason have I returned to this game. Something very exciting has come along thanks to Sasha Ball and Froze Lunky, the mod to end all mods for Spelunky here. And the level editor is what I'm referring to here. The level editor has just been released. It is free, of course, a free part of Sasha Ball's Froze Lunky 2.3, I, remember, I uh, think is what the current update is. 2.3 is going to get you this level editor, and it is fantastic. I am trying to learn it as we go here, trying to uh, pick up on shortcuts, tips, tricks, easy, th easy things to learn. But for now, I'm going to just do a quick overview of what to expect from the level editor here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump in here just so you guys can see what's going on. I'm actually going to go ahead and make it a little bit bigger here just so you can get a full view, full visual of the level editor here within Froze Lucky. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple layout to look at what's actually going on in the stage. This is a default layout that the Froze Lucky level editor will load up with from the get-go. For example, if you go up here and click new level pack, it should load this one every single time, just to give you a general idea of how things look when you're trying to edit. So first of all, these terrain tiles here, as you can see, these are the number one terrain tiles that are just regular terrain, and these are going to be the most common when you're going through the mines and when you're going through the jungle. Of course, you're going to be using the jungle tiles a lot more frequently. Uh, but a quick overview of what's actually going on here in the HUD as well. So for starters, there's the level select tile over here where you can go through and you can choose all the different levels. You can see here we got 3-3, we got the ice caves, we got the jungle here. Uh, as I was mentioning, there are jungle, or uh, oh, this is actually beehive terrain tile throughout this entire level. <laughs> That's kind of horrifying. But uh, yeah, it's just a pretty basic overview of what's going on here. This isn't exactly what I had in mind when I was hearing about the le uh, level editor for Spelunky, but I'm pretty okay with this as a tool. So here's what I've been able to concoct thus far. I just made a very, very, very fast, uh, quick level just to test things out in 1-1. So uh, this is what I'm working with at the moment. I just whip this up, and it's very easy to do something like this. And I'll show show you guys exactly how easy it is to do that right here by switching over into 1-2. So we're going to take this, and we're going to clear the entire level. There's multiple ways of doing that. First of all, you can just go with Control-A and then press Delete, and that will clear out the entire thing. Or if you don't want to do that, you can go up here and go to, uh, ooh, what is it? I think it's Level, yeah, Clear Level, so you can hit Control-N as well. And now uh, that makes things easier for you. There's a lot of very intuitive sh keyboard shortcuts and tools with the entire editor, so that's very nice. Things like undo, redo, cut, copy, paste, force level, clear level, all that kind of stuff. You can also resize the window over here if you want to go full screen or close to full screen. Uh, that is available to you as well. So let's go from the beginning here. Let's try to start off a new level. First thing you're going to want to do is drop in an entrance. And the way that the game, or the way that the editor rather, determines what is an entrance and what is an exit, because as you can probably see here, the static platformless entrance slash exit, this is the exact same value. So you want to make sure that you're putting your entrance up in this top row here. As you can see, this is divided in a 4x4 grid. So to put the entrance down, you want to right-click like this. Oh, jeez, sorry, that's <laughs> that's way too big of a tile selection. Uh, that jumps into another point, actually. In order to place bigger tiles, all you need to do is select the kind of size that you want to put down, and then you just right-click to do that. But of course, we only want to do a one-by-one -one tile for the entrance. So we'll go ahead and do that right around there, and then we'll place some regular blocks underneath all of that. So there we go. So we got ourselves a start here. And uh, we can do something similar to the one that I did in the other one, so we'll just go ahead and create a weird little pattern here with all this stuff, and eventually it'll lead down to the exit, so we'll go ahead and go like that. There we go. And uh, you can just go ahead and fill these things out like this, or to be, uh, or to make things easier on yourself, what you can do is click into any area down here, and you can press Control F, and that will fill up all these remaining spaces with, uh, with, you know, the regular terrain tiles. So that's very easy to use. I'll uh, we'll go ahead and throw some other stuff in here. We can throw, like, some spikes on there somewhere. Let's just make this entire row spikes, because why not? Because we can, for funsies. So I'll see if I can jump across this at the beginning here. And then maybe let's throw in some enemies just to make it a little bit more complex. And, of course, we do need to throw the exit out on the end of here as well. So let's drop that in there real fast. So in order to add things like enemies, crates, any other kind of uh, in-level thing you can think of, what you're going to want to do is go up here to the level and select Entity Picker, or press Control-P. And that's going to take you to basically every last thing that you could possibly add onto the game here. So you've got a whole big fat list 
of uh, stuff you can add. Unfortunately, that's not popping up in my uh, window capture at the moment, but it is a separate window that pops up and it just lists everything. And there's also a search function in here as well. Uh, I guess just take my word for it. We'll just go ahead and add something like a... Uh, let's add a push block? No, let's add a penguin quitter, critter. That sounds like fun. We'll throw a penguin critter right there. Just for shits and giggles. We'll do another entity picker real quick and we'll just go with... Uh, let's just do a snake. So you can search snake and you pick that entity and then you are going to be able to uh, throw that anywhere you want. So we'll just throw the snake right there just to make it kind of precarious. And we'll throw one down here too. Just for fun. Alright, so, now that we've got that all set, this is a very, very basic level, of course, but this is the gist of things. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this off of our screen capture here. And I very much enjoy how simple it is to actually jump into and play your custom levels. So as you'll see here, we're going to jump into your uh, adventure, and the game has been running this whole time, so it's not like you need to reset the game every time you create a new level or make any changes to your edited level. You'll be able to jump in here and make changes on the fly pretty damn simply, so it's a really, really nice, very, uh, very fluid interface, I suppose, is the word I want to use. So as you can see here, well, first of all, I should mention the fact that the rock spawns here because, uh, by default, it drops a throwable object near the entrance, wherever you happen to be, so that is, uh, I believe there's a way to get around that, I believe there's a, a hot fix uh, as far as, uh, if you want to avoid having the having the uh, rock or the boulder or whatever you, whatever you may not want to see on those levels. So this is my first level. This is the one that I created beforehand, which is why you're not seeing the stuff that we made before. But we'll go down and get into 1-2, and then you'll see the level that we concocted prior. So good at this game. Look at that. 1-1 one, one complete. I'm a magician. All right, so here's that level we were just making, and uh, I'm actually looking at the level editor right now just to... Remind myself of all the stuff we got going on. So there's the oh, penguin quitter. Penguin quitter died. So sad. So yeah, this is uh, this is the level we made. There's a slight graphical issue there, but not, nothing too big. But yeah, just very very simple interface to use, and just everything makes so much sense. Apparently, I put a gold bar there. I had no idea I did that, but there it is. And then uh, again, if you want to make changes on the fly, you can do that. We'll just kill ourselves here so we can get that quick restart menu up. But all we'll have to do is pop this back up and say we wanted to throw on, like, you know, uh, a rope to climb on at some point later on in the level. All we gotta do is go to the entity picker, add an auto-dropping rope, and then we can throw that, uh, say, like, right here or something like that. Let's just make three. Let's make it, like, a spike bit. That'll be fun. And uh, then we can do stuff like, you know, grab any of these things, uh, ruby tile, old bitey spawn. There's an old bitey spawn tile, which is interesting to me. Uh, but yeah, all this stuff, I, I'm still kind of learning on the fly as well here, so I'm trying to figure out what a lot of these things do, but there's a lot of potential here, of course, and it is really exciting to me. I am very, very excited to see what kinds of levels people can concoct, and of course, there's already a couple, uh, coming out of the woodwork here, so I'm really excited to play those, and I'll include all the links down below in the description for you guys if you want to see... Uh, or if you want to try to create some custom, le custom levels for yourself, and I'll also include the subreddit where you can submit those. And I'm going to be checking that subreddit frequently as well as the archive on uh, Sasha Ball's actual website to find new custom levels to play. And I really hope that uh, this becomes a big new thing and uh, kind of resurrects Spelunky, at least resurrects my interest in Spelunky for a while. So it's going to be awesome. Hope you guys find an opportunity to uh, get to level editing for yourself. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the fact that this does indeed save your changes. Uh, actually, I think I might need to... Oh yeah, I just think it did. I got to 1-1 one, one again. There is a way to make it so your reset takes you back to the level you were just playing, so we'll have to figure out how that works as well. I don't know if I saved this actually, so yeah. Oh yeah, so I gotta save these changes. So you know what? I'm, I'm gonna test right now. We're gonna save this. We're gonna see whether or not that actually does carry over to 1-2, the changes that I just made. There should be three ropes above this spike bit, and indeed there are. Okay, so even if you're in the middle of a... Uh, even if you're in the middle of a run, you can make changes, then save those changes and do a quick reset, and you're good to go. So, that's pretty awesome. So, yeah, again, not too tough. I'll probably end up uh, trying to create a few levels myself at some point. But for now, just opening up the invitation and letting you guys know I'm very excited to see any kind of custom Spelunky level creations you may have to offer. But that's going to do it for this quick rundown of the Spelunky level editor. Again, all the links that you need are in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, hopefully, in Spelunky Custom Levels.
Oh yeah.